Hello and welcome to the Parasoft What's New video for SOA Test, Virtualize, and CTP 2021.1. In this video, we'll be covering seven topics. New requirements, view, and smart test execution. Virtualized creation from traffic enhancement, specifying a service definition file for more accurate assets. Sequence responders creation and management with CTP. CTP accessibility enhancements. Java 11 support. Support for GitHub Cloud CI CD system. And support for additional industry standards. And we'll begin with a little bit of maintenance. 2020.2 or newer licenses are required for SOA test, virtualized, and CTP 2021.1. So if you're planning to upgrade, please be sure to either visit the Parasoft customer portal to request a new license. Additionally, you can send an email to license at parasoft.com to request that new license. Or contact your organization's account manager. They will be happy to help you get those new licenses. And if you're not sure who your organization's account manager is, feel free to open a support ticket on the customer portal so we may assist getting you in contact with the right team. The first features I will be discussing are the brand new requirements view and smart test execution. SOATest now has a dedicated UI where testers can associate their tests with requirements and easily view them. This view helps identify which requirements are and are not covered, which improves visibility for management and QA. Additionally, smart test execution recognizes requirement traceability and identifies which tests are associated with work items so they can be executed in a group to test the state of the requirement. Let's take a look at how quick and easy it is to use this new view. This here is the requirements view, and I have imported multiple requirements from my product tracker. If I wanted to associate this test suite to my requirement, all I have to do is actually drag and drop it over to the requirement. And here I have the associated test suite. The opposite is also possible. I can take the requirement and move it over to the test suite, and that will also create a link. Now, if I wanted to execute every single test suite associated with my requirement, I simply right click, test using example configuration. And just like that, we can associate our tests with requirements and run the test to validate the state of the requirements. The next feature is creation from traffic enhancement, specifying a service definition file for more accurate assets. The traffic wizard is used to create virtual assets from recorded traffic, but the message grouping isn't always accurate and may need manual intervention. This enhancement allows users to apply a service definition file so the traffic wizard can model the traffic and improve the grouping and data source correlation that are created. This will create more accurate PVAs, which means fewer manual modifications and faster PVA creation. Here we have two examples of message grouping from the traffic wizard using the same traffic for both. For the message grouping on the left, no service definition file was provided, and for the message grouping on the right, the service definition file was included. You can see that the message grouping on the right is better organized and categorized thanks to the API declarations within the service definition file. Additionally, many of the URL paths for the feature responders have been modified to better fit what is expected of the service right at the moment was identified from the few APIs that were recorded. We move on to our next feature, Sequence Responder Creation and Management with CTP. The Sequence Responder mode was introduced in Virtualize 2020.1 and has been extended to CTP. These new responder modes simplify the creation of complex service behavior and make it easier to simulate stateful behavior. With the extension to CTP, it's easier than ever to quickly and easily create sequence responders, even when away from the desktop. Here I have a sequence responder open in CTP. From here, I can modify the order of the sequence. I can actually add a new message into the sequence responses. I can delete this response, or I can modify a response. So I can add yay to my Friday. And just like that, I can modify my sequence responder however I need straight from CTP. Next, we have some great updates to the look and feel of the CTP web interface to accommodate accessibility needs. This includes high contrast views, screen reader support, and keyboard navigation which is being used in the video playing on the right. Users can now use the tab and arrow keys to navigate around the fields in each of the CTP windows, making it easier to use for those with mobility challenges. And color schemes were modified with higher contrast colors to improve readability. I am happy to announce that SOA test, virtualized, low test, and CTP now support Java 11 starting with 2021.1. Keep in mind that the embedded data repository and web method tools are not supported on Java 11, so if you're a frequent user of either, you may want to stay with Java 8. Additionally, the SOA vert installation also supports Java 11 for deployments on Tomcat 9 servlet containers. Good news for users of GitHub Cloud, GitHub Actions for Parasoft CTP enable DevOps to provision service virtualization environments execute API testing jobs, or destroy temporary silos as part of their automated GitHub project workflow. For more information, please visit github.com forward slash marketplace forward slash actions forward slash deploy dash environment. 
The last topic for this video is support for additional standards. These are all extension tools that can be found in the marketplace within the Parasoft customer portal. We have had TCP IP support for some time now, but the new TCP IP listener and transport are a major upgrade for your TCP IP communication needs. This tool includes support for SSL and many forms of read mode, such as fixed, prefixed, prefixed string, and token delimited. Not only does the advanced TCP IP transport and listener add support for three more read modes in the original TCP IP transport and listener, it has more flexibility than the original as well. Fixed length is now supported and we can modify the length to whatever suits the message. Token delimited was part of the older TCP IP transport and listener, but we can now have support to specify the token type, which we can choose hex, string, or byte. Prefix variable length number is new and used for messages where the length of the message is included at the beginning of the message. It specifies how many characters a transport or listener should read. And we have support for prefix variable length string configuration of this as well. When we execute this, we'll see that it runs as expected. And of course, we have all these different options on the listener side as well. Next, we have the new Kafka simulation listener to accompany the Kafka transport that has been in the Parasol marketplace for a little while now. And speaking of Kafka, we have upgraded the Kafka transport with TOS support. Next, we have the new NDJSON message format, which enables SOATES and Virtualize to not only send and receive NDJSON messages, but also enables data banking and assertion with NDJSON messages. And our last extension tool to cover is the FIX ICE message format, which enables support for FIX ICE messages. And like the NDJSON extension tool, this means we can data bank and assert values within FIX ICE messages. Over in SOATES, I have responded with a literal FIX message, which can be fairly difficult to read and modify. But that's okay because we support for input mode for ICE messages as well, making it much easier to read and manipulate ICE messages within SOATES and Virtualize. This concludes the What's New video for SOATES, Virtualize, and CTP 2021.1. Thank you for watching.